minutes, but okay, it's, it's loading. It's loading now. Hey, guys. Awesome. Hi. Hi, can everyone see us? Is is pretty cool. Let's see. So it's probably a delay. So so how, oh is it is it still delayed? And there might be. I'm not sure. There usually is, but we'll see. So so hello hello to everyone uh, who's already here. I guess. Just, um, we're going to wait one or two more minutes for everyone to join. So at least the, the chat, the chat is working. Oh man, there's people answering polls. Cool. People are answering the polls already? Crazy. Yep. So there's a poll section. There's also the question and answer section. If you have questions, you can throw them in there. Somebody already did. What do you know? Nice. Cool. Nice. Great. Yeah, if you guys want to, I guess you can answer the poll anytime because as long as, long as we're waiting. Um, we have, I, I, I just came up with two questions. Like, we're just wondering, you know, how long how long have you been selling on Amazon, and um, is this your first time using a repricer? So, if the answer is yes, this is your first time, then like all, all of this stuff, like min price, max price, and rule, it's going to be new to you. Um, but if you have used a repricer before, chances are you already know min price and max price, and you already have a basic idea of how rules work. So that's pretty cool. So we have somebody from, um, we have Armando from Calgary. That's pretty cool. Uh, Calgary, uh, Canada, right? I I've seen, I haven't been to Calgary, but I saw some pictures. It, it looks like a really cool city, if I'm not mistaken. Like it looks like there's a lot of parks and stuff. Awesome. Okay. Well, I guess, um, I guess, yeah, now, now is a, now is a good time to, to start. We've got, um, we've got several, we got several people in here already. Um, okay. So I guess, um, I guess we can int introduce, uh, this event and introduce ourselves. So um, this is the Be Cool uh, new user webinar. We're encouraging um, new users to, to kind of come to this lesson or class kind of um, to help you, help you get started. I know there's a lot of stuff um, in repricing and it can, be, uh, it can be a lot of stuff to learn. So, so hopefully uh, this, this webinar will make it easier for you. And uh, Chris, you wanna say hi? Yeah, so hi guys, I'm Chris. Uh, I am a seller, just like you guys. We've been selling for probably about two years or so uh, by now, and we do OARA, wholesale, uh, and some PL. So we've kind of made the block, I guess, around. Uh, and yeah, so I've been with Be Cool for about a year work, uh, using their product, and I also manage the Be Cool user support group. So if you have extra questions, you can certainly uh, shoot messages in there and we help you out there. Yeah, Chris Chris is uh, super, super helpful. You know, and he knows a lot and knows a lot about how, how Be Cool works. Okay. Um, all right, so if you guys just joined us, um, we have we have a few uh, we have a poll. Can you guys see that? Uh, some of you guys have already answered it, which is great. We're just wondering how long you've been selling on Amazon, and is, is this is this your first time using a repricer? And and three people, three people said no. So this is um, so you've used a repricer before. So 
you've um, so you probably have some expectations and understanding of repricing. So that's that's good. That's going to be very interesting. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and do my screen share. I guess we're going to go into the presentation. Okay. Oops. Sorry. Wrong slide. Okay. And they're full screen. Okay. Chris, is it showing up correctly? It is. Okay. It's currently showing as just like another video screen. Can you make it larger? Oh, I know. I know. We have to, let's hide our, our video. I'm going to hide. Oh, okay. I'm going to hide myself and uh, I'm going to hide you oh. as well. That works. Awesome. And that makes it, that makes it bigger. Yep. That works. Perfect. Okay. Um, so here, um, Chris and I, we already kind of introduced ourselves a little bit. Okay, so let's let's go into it. Uh, today, we're going to cover the uh, features. Um, and after we kind of go over everything, we're going to do a demo, like 10, 15 minute demo with inside that, that software. I'll tell you about our user resources, um, promotions, and at the end, we'll have a Q&A session. Um, the first... Four parts should take maybe an hour. I don't know. Maybe we'll finish a little bit early, and then we'll open it up to Q&A. Um, although, I guess we can answer if, you know, if, if, it, if, it, if it fits okay. I mean, we can answer questions throughout as well. Okay. Um, all right. So... Uh, so let's start with the features guides. Um, I'll be going over pricing plans and speed, listing management, automated setup, profit and ROI calculation, rule basics, and data and reports. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, this is actually this is just a screenshot of the pricing page, and. Um, so later on, uh, you you'll be you'll need to know like which plan that you want uh, that you want to subscribe to. So right now, if you're on the free trial, you get five thousand. You, you're basically on the five thousand listing plan, the fifty dollar plan. You get accelerated repricing. Um, that's fifteen minutes repricing and and um, five thousand listings. But after your trial ends. Um, you know, you have to decide, do you, do you want the 1,000 listing plan, 5,000, um, 7,500? Or if you're looking for faster speed, it starts at $100. So the 10,000 listing plan, um, you get the accelerated plus, oh, sorry, accelerated repricing plus speed is five minutes. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So now we're going to um, start talking about the features a little bit. Um, okay. So I'm going to start with listings management. So uh, in Be Cool, you can uh, you can manage listings individually. Like you can, um, you know, once you log in, you can set min and max price and rule for for um, for listings one at a time, or um, we also have bulk actions that can, um, like you can check off multiple listings and you can apply for a bunch of listings at a time. And um, we have a pretty cool feature within bulk actions where um, there's kind of already a filter built into it. So like, for example, you can choose, uh, if, you, if you're in the set min, max, price, and rule bulk actions, you can choose all listings missing min, max, price, and rule, or you can apply um, the settings to a, a whole group. And um, we also have several ways of filtering for listings. So on the left side, um, you'll see all those, all those filters and all the conditions that you can sort for. Um, and we also have a search bar where you directly, you just type in the SKU ASIN title. Um, you can choose if it's active or inactive, FBA or FBM. And um, within each listing, um, you'll see you'll see that box. It has a lot of data inside, and you can you can sort by all of those things like um, the 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 title, 
fulfillment type, uh, buy box win percentage, et cetera, sales rank. And um, the, the, the fourth way to kind of manage your listings is using uh, the bulk upload file. So, so uh, is everyone okay so far, Chris? Is, is, was that all right? Anything that you'd like to add? Chris? Hey, Chris, are, are you there? Can, can you hear us? Oh, can you guys, can you guys hear me? Is, is it okay? I turned my, um, I, I turned the screen off, but, but you should still be able to hear me, right? Okay, Sean says he can still hear me. Um, is, is Chris, is Chris there? <laughs> okay, well, I'm just gonna keep going. So I'm sure I'm sure Chris is around. Okay. Okay. So um, automated setup. We have this um, within general settings. It's also on a managed listings page. We've added some things to help you kind of set up faster. Um, for example, you can reset your price when um, when the listing is out of stock. And um, there's four filter. Uh, there's four options in the middle that lets you set default values for min, max, rule, and cost. Um, there's there's one for setting FBM shipping cost, and and for setting default shipping fee for FBA listings. So this last one is not so much a feature that 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 helps you it, it's it's more like um our system has a requirement that you must have a shipping fee for each listings uh sorry for each listing and um and so with this for fba listings if you turn this on we'll automatically assign it to zero um and then you can set min max you can set min and max price before the shipping has downloaded from the reports um, so if that's not clear, I'll, I'll explain that again in a little bit. There's there's other ways to uh, set shipping. Um, that was the automatic way. You can also um, you can also do it from the shipping column. There, there's a shipping column on the managed listings page. You can do it through uh, bulk actions and also through the bulk upload file. There's a, there's a uh, field for shipping. Okay, and one of our most popular features is our profit and ROI calculation. Um, we have a FBA and FBM calculator. They're, they're very similar, uh, except the FBM calculator has the uh, has an FBM shipping cost field and the FBA calculator does not. But the FBA calculator has, um, has the FBA fulfillment fees. Um, but but either way, both calculators, uh, you enter your cost, and um, we 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 calculate up the the total cost, including fees. And um, either you enter a min price, and then it spits out the estimated profit, profit margin, ROI, or you can work backwards, like you enter estimated profit, profit margin, ROI, and um, and you get your min or max price. Okay, everything okay so far? Uh, is Chris? Can can you hear me? Are you there? Okay. Well, <laughs> well, we'll we'll keep going. Um, okay. So uh, before I, I uh, we we cover the the rules themselves. Um, here are a few slides about like to help you visualize some of the scenarios that you you you'll see. Okay, so, so, um, so hopefully everyone understands the concept of uh, min and max price. Min is just your floor and max is your ceiling. And, and so in the first scenario, the buy box price is $15. So we consider that the buy box price is above your min price. 
If you look at the second scenario, the buy box price is at $10, so it equals your min price. And in the third scenario, buy box price equals uh, your max price of $20. Okay. Um, on the next, on, on this uh, next slide, um, in the in the top scenario, the um, I put them both on the same chart, but but basically it's two different scenarios. Um, so on the left, the buy box price is at seven dollars; it's below your bin price. And on the right, the buy box price is twenty three dollars; it's above your max price. Um, in the in the second in the second uh, picture, you have no competition, so no other sellers on the listing, just you. And um, on the bottom one, the buy box is suppressed. So you do have competitors, and and they have a price between your min and max price, but uh, the buy box is suppressed. So I kind of grade them out. Okay, and now we're kind of getting into how you will reprice. So in the top scenario, um, let's say the buy box price is fifteen dollars. It's above your uh, above your min. And your price is also fifteen dollars, so you you are matching the buy box. So that's what that means. Um, in the scenario below, um, so it's kind of two different situations here. Um, if um, if you reprice one cent below the buy box at uh, so the buy box is fifteen and you're fourteen ninety nine, that means you're beating the buy box. Um, but not everyone, not everyone wants to do that. Some people don't want to beat the buy box. Um, you can also reprice up versus the buy box. So you, you know, in this scenario, you're repricing five cents up against the buy box. Okay, so I'm going to uh, go back, go, go back. Um, how's, I'm, I'm just gonna check the, que the questions and comments really quick. Uh, Keep going, then. Okay. So, 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 Chris, maybe you're still, um, maybe still having some audio issues, but uh, I guess, I guess we'll just keep going. Oh, oh, oh! Reinvite and reinvite you. Okay. All right. Hold on. I can do this. Yes. Okay. We're, we're going to, uh, I just re-invited Chris so we can give Chris a second to log back in. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Sorry, guys. <laughs> can hide mine again and continue on. You're doing great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to hide your screen. Okay. Back, back in here. All right, okay, so this is the actual rule. So now that I kind of walked over all of the, the scenarios with you, so when um, when you go into the rule at the very, um, when you see the repricing settings, um, this is where you choose your competitors. You know, so if you want to compete against Amazon, FBA, FBM, et cetera, you choose your competitors here. Um, okay, where you see Below that, where you see buy box winner found between min and max, this is where you decide, do you want to beat, match, or reprice up versus the buy box price? And um, below that, you'll see no competition. Remember, this is the setting where you have, there's no other sellers. So what do you want to do? Do you want to use max price or use something in between min and max price? Um, the next one below that is when the buy box winner is outside of your range. So when the buy box winner is below your min price or above your max price, what do you want to do here? Um, okay, it's below that is the suppressed buy box when everyone's price is too high. What, what, um, so basically there is no buy box. What do you want to do here? And the safety net, um, it, it limits uh, it limits how much like um, your your price can go down each time. Um, so so you enter a value. Let's say your limit is like uh, thirty percent. So your price can't drop more than thirty percent in any. Um, oh sorry, the first field is um, if 
if your price like lowers by more than 30%, then um, you limit it by like 10% or something. The second one is how much you limit your price change to. And I'm showing you the version of the rule that competes against buy box price. There's also, um, you can also choose to compete for lowest price. And the options are slightly, are slightly different. So instead of competing against buy box price, you're competing against the, the lowest price. Um, but it's, it's, it's very similar. And um, everyone, uh, the, regardless of what rule you use, there's custom settings. So um, with custom settings, there's several features for excluding sellers. Uh, you, you can exclude by seller ID. Um, whether, or whether, or whether they compete, um, sorry, whether they use free shipping, expedited shipping. And, and actually, even though I, I kind of emphasize it, exclude, you can also choose to include only. So like um, you can choose to reprice exclusively against like a certain seller. So you just you choose include and you enter their seller ID. Um, you can also exclude sellers by feedback rating and feedback count. This is, I hear this is pretty handy for kind of um, excluding fake sellers, like scam sellers. Like you have some, I've heard that there's uh, some sellers, they, they jump on, they jump on Amazon and um, they sell for a couple of weeks, but they actually don't have any products or something like that. You can, uh, you, this, this will help you exclude those people. Um, and, and we have an exclude, we, uh, exclude back ordered. So this is a pretty popular feature as well. Exclude sellers with long handling time. And for those of you who uh, sell used products, um, you can turn on the repricing by subcondition. Um, so there's, you know, so you can choose to compete against like same subcondition, same or better used types or collectible. There's a lot of options there. And, um, and kind of uh, an add on to the rule is that we have a scheduler. And what the scheduler does is it allows you to kind of to pause repricing and um, and you can change your, your price when you pause. And then um, there's a time when it starts again. So it'll start repricing normally against, uh, uh, according to your rule. And you can pause repricing kind of each day. So like each day you can kind of um, pause repricing and then maybe raise your price. And then um, an hour or two later, you can enable repricing again. That's if you have this, the need to do that. And you can also um, pause repricing at a future time. So let's say like next week you are going on vacation or something and you just want to pause repricing for a week, but you don't want to pause things permanently, then you can um, come in here and you can pause repricing for a specific time. So those are the slides on the rules. Uh, Chris, do you have, is there anything that, anything else we should cover? Uh, I think that's oh. good enough for now, probably. Okay. It's a lot of information to soak in, so. <laughs> it is, it is. Um, let me, is it everyone, is everyone okay? Okay, looks like, looks like everyone's okay. So, so we'll keep going. All right. Um, okay, so this uh, the next part is kind of the data that you see in Be Cool. So um, we have competitor analysis, and um, this this kind of gives you a visual of of like um, all the sellers on the listing. So you you can see well the top twenty anyways. You can see the top twenty, and you can see where your min and max price is relative to the other sellers. Um, so at the very top, um, you'll, you'll see the listing. It'll give you the listing information, the ASIN and, and the condition. Um, 
and then and then yeah, you you see your all, all your competitors. Um, you you can see their price, their price, their shipping, their seller type. Are they FBA, FBM? NF means non-featured. That means they can't win the buy box. Um, condition, handling time. If the, if if there's expedited shipping, you'll you'll see a check mark in that column. If they're back ordered, you'll see. I believe you'll see both a check mark and a date. It'll, uh, if you hover over, it'll give you a date for um, when they are back ordered to. And um, you see their feedback rating, total ratings, and where they ship from. So competitor analysis is pretty handy. You can see this for each listing. And one kind of cool thing is that um, you can actually edit the name of the competitor. So, um, by default, like you'll just see the their seller ID is just it's just a big jumble of letters. But you can actually rename your competitors to something like to their store name so that you know you can recognize them better. And this actually applies across listings. Okay, and the next uh, place where we have a lot of handy data is actually um, for each listing. You, you'll see. Um, a buy box win percentage, the buy box winner, um, whether they're FBA, FBM, um, the your your position on, on the listing, like so six is like you're the sixth lowest price on those on this listing. You get the um, the next one is sales rank, and you can leave a note. And um, I also like to point out that these these are fil you can filter by these. Price history, um, you can, you can um, for each listing, you can see the price history. It goes up to um, five days. And um, there's also a place where you can see all the, the price history of all the listings. Uh, now, I know that, Chris, uh, you, use, you use price history quite a lot, right? Yeah, usually uh, <clears throat> I do the specific price, but you can also do price history of your entire uh, account too if you want yep cool right on yeah you can um this is a good place to see like um see your price changes and 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 see like you know how much you change you know who who you were repricing against so that's pretty handy and um business reports okay so I actually think that business reports are very powerful, but I think it's it's a little bit advanced. So I'm going to tell you about it, but like, you know, um, so maybe you can explore it in the future. You don't necessarily have to use it right away. Um, uh, but the, the most popular business report statistic that I think that um, sellers need is the uh, buy box win percentage. So, um, you can track your buy box win percentage here for each uh, for each day, and uh, how we how we calculate buy box win percentage is we take all the price notifications for the day and we see how many are have you in the buy box. So let's say that we received ten price notifications that day, and um, three are in the buy box. So we estimate that your buy box win percentage is thirty percent. Um, okay. And, uh, so, so a lot, a lot of the, uh, the data that we have in business reports, um, it tracks for individual listings and across your whole account. So like I just mentioned, buy box win percentage, you can see your buy box win percentage for individual listings as well as, um, across your whole account. And it uses it uses our our estimate the way that I just told you like um, we see the number of price notifications and how many that have you in the buy box. And there's also other data within the business reports that tells you who your main competitors are. Is it is it Amazon FBA FBM? It lets you know who is winning the buy box in terms of fulfillment type. Is it Amazon FBA or FBM? Who is the lowest price? Amazon FBA FBM and it can tell you um, that some other cool stuff is like I can tell you lowest price and uh, highest price 
order for for individual listings. So, um, so for example, listing A, you can see your lowest price that you sold it for and the highest price. Um, so that's that's a lot of information I think at one time. Um, so maybe just let that slowly sink in. There's a lot of data in business reports. Okay, and um, so how was that? Uh, how was that so far? Is everyone okay? I think, it went, I think it went pretty well. I don't see any immediate questions right yet. Okay, I don't. Okay, all right. So that was kind of um, that was kind of the overview. I wanted to give you an overview before. Wow, thanks, Jamie. Good stuff. Powerful tool. Okay, yeah. Um, Okay, so I wanted to go over everything and now we're actually going to do the demo part. Okay. Uh, hmm. Okay, sorry, give me a second. I have to find a way to um, because we're not going to use the PowerPoint anymore. We're going to use, um, we're actually going to go into Be Cool. So I have to find a way, figure out how to switch that. Um, so Chris, while, while I, uh, I kind of try to figure this out, can you um, look at the, see what the poll says so far? Yeah, sure. So it looks like we actually have a lot of people that have been selling for a fair number of years here. There's uh, some new sell newish sellers there. One to two years looks like a couple, and then there's some that are three to five, and there's some that are five plus. So there's all different kinds of uh, oh, nice. users here today. Okay, so I'm I'm a screen share. Okay, I'm just going to screen share my entire screen. Okay, I'm going to go into the software now. Can everyone can everyone see the software? Or at least my screen. Yeah. Is it is it Yeah, that should work. It, it's be cool, right? Yeah. You just need it. Could you uh hide your video quick again? Oh, hide my video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. Yeah, I know you'll get a little inception there for a bit, but <laughs> Okay. Oh, hide my video. Work. There we go. Okay. There you go. Okay, awesome. now. Okay, now, now it's the we're good, right? Yep. Okay. Good. Okay. So this is the software, and this is just my test account. Uh, this is what my test account looks like. And before we get started, I recommend that we actually do a little bit of thinking and planning first, like. Um, so, so let's think about, are you trying to compete for lowest price or buy box price? Are your competitors kind of close in price or are they spread far apart? Are your competitors FBA, FBM, or Amazon? All of these things kind of will affect how you set up min and max price as well as how you set up your rule. Okay, so, um, so that's what I'd, I'd just like you to think about a little bit. And um, so the first part of this demo is I'm going to go over the managed listings page. And so this, I think most users spend most of their time on this page, um, just managing their listings. And then after that, I'll go into rules and, and, the, and, and the other things. Okay, so um, first thing that I, I want to introduce to you are the filters and sorting. So, um, so yeah, so at the top, um, you can enter specific, uh, specific listings, a SKU, ASIN, or title. Um, you can search for active or inactive um, fulfillment type. So like maybe you just want active and FBA. Okay, and then and then you hit you hit search. Okay, so this is my demo account. So there's 
Um, so I don't have any active FBA listings, but if I choose FBM, then I, I have a bit more. Um, and um, as I mentioned before, um, these these columns, like all of these that have are underlined, these are all sortable. So like, for example, the date created, um, if, if you click on this, it, it'll sort by it'll sort by date created. So that just pulled up my oldest listings. And, and so this this now makes it my newest listings. And um, yeah, you can there's other ways to sort like if you click on status, it'll pull up the active listings. Oh, well, I, I already sorted for active listings, so these are all active, I guess. So I can go back to all. Okay, so if I hit status again, um, so yeah, that pulls up the active, and that pulls up the inactive. I, I think you guys get the idea. So there's a lot of there's a lot of filters up here, and um, and there's even more filters over here. Again, there's. A, <laughs> On the left side, active, inactive, um, you can search for repricing enable listings or the repricing pause listings. And um, if you click on default filters, hello, my mouse is not working. Okay, here we go. Um, there's, there's a whole bunch of more filters here like listings that match by box price, listings at lowest price. Um, these that say missing min price, max price rule, these um, these will help you find the ones that you need to um, add min, max, and rule to so you can start repricing. Um, down here, uh, so, so this is a group. If you've added any groups, um, you, you'll see them here. So so some, some users, they like to set up groups of listings. For example, I don't know, like maybe all of your toys you maybe you want to group them together or for some other uh, reason you want to group listings together. And um, over here we have even more filters that help you search for specific things. For example, um, let's look at, uh, let's see, your price, okay? So, um, so for example, maybe you just want to reprice uh, everything that's between like five and $15. So you would enter five and 15 right here and you would hit search. Um, so what that means is like in the your price column, um, let's go back up here. If the price is between five and 15, it'll, it'll pull that up. Okay, so I think, I think that's it for the filters. Um, okay, so so filters are just to help you pull up the right listings that, that, that help you get organized uh, so you can start managing. So uh, the next thing that you want to be doing is uh, setting up min and max price. So you can uh, do that individually. So I have a demo group that I'm going to click on. Okay. All right. So... So within my demo group, yeah, I already entered a few min and max price, but anyways, um, you can um, like $3 and oops. So I got that because um, $3 is below my shipping. And so the min price has to be above uh, your price, uh, sorry, your shipping. So $4 and that should be fine. Okay, that's saved. Um yeah, and you enter your min and max price, and you can, um, here, you can choose the rule. And your price, you can actually change your price on Amazon from here. Um, but if you want to change your price manually, you definitely want to pause repricing first. Otherwise, you change your price and will immediately just, like, uh, reprice again. So that's not, not so useful. So you want to pause repricing. Um... Let's see, so okay, so that's how you do it for individual listings. You can also enter cost right here. And if you want to change multiple listings at a time, um, so I can, I can click on these three, for example, and then I go into bulk actions. And um, you, you would need to turn these on. 
and you, you can set your min price, max price and rule um, for those three selected listings. Uh, but that's not the only way. You don't always have to choose listings ahead of time. Uh, bulk actions, it'll also let you, for example, choose all listings missing min, max, price, and rule. So there's 64 listings in this account that are missing min, max, and rule. And you can go ahead and just apply. Um, uh, you, you can apply this to those listings or you can apply to a specific group. So I have my, my demo group. I can just apply this to all listings within that group. So yeah, so, um, so bulk actions, just remember this lets you apply um, to multiple listings at a time. And, um, and, and of course, each listing has their own actions on the left side. So you can, you can turn on competitor analysis uh, this this is not such a good listing for competitor analysis, but but this this one is much better, I guess. Um, you you can this is what I showed you earlier. Um, so you can see my min price of four dollars actually covers. Um, it's below the lowest price seller, so I can compete with the all the all the lowest price sellers. And there's a few sellers above my max price. Uh, this guy's selling for almost two thousand dollars for this. For this book so that uh, he must have something special there um, let's see oh and okay so if you um, how do you let's see if you want to create your own group so you see I, I uh, selected three listings right here and um, you just click add to group and, and then you choose your group or make a new one and, and that's how you add a group uh, profit uh, profit calculator okay so uh, there's here's where you can find the profit calculator under the the min the min price column the the max price column and and also the your price column so I guess I guess we can very um, maybe maybe show maybe show you the calculator really quickly. So um, let's say the product cost is like $1. FBM shipping cost is $1. Um, hit reload. Okay, and it, and it pulls up the referral fee and closing fee for me. Okay, so right now our, our all our profit ROI is all negative. So uh, I think we need to maybe raise our min price a little bit. So let's choose six dollars. Okay, so now now I'm positive. So you you can see how that changes. Um, like I mentioned before, you can also enter your own um, ROI here, and and you can get the min price. So uh, Chris, what's what do you think? What 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 should I enter for ROI here? Have a good number uh, depends on what you want to do but typically I do like 30 percent oh, okay yeah. all right 30 percent yeah sure so if I enter 30 percent here so you see that the, the moon price changes okay and just and just hit save when you're done um, okay so that's the profit calculator um, over here, the listings available. Okay, so um, this this just tells you like uh, what plan you're subscribed to, how many listings you have, and so my account, I have five thousand listings available. Um, I I only enabled twelve. Okay, so I have like close to five thousand more that I can be repricing. And uh, inside the settings, uh, we have general settings here. And this is what I mentioned earlier. These, um, these are the automations that, that I mentioned earlier. You set default values as things are, um, are downloaded and you can also reset your price when the listing is out of stock. And, and this set shipping um, is for setting the FBA shipping rate so here is usually zero dollars. So, um, so what shipping is is right here under the your price plus shipping column. 
we need we need to see this like we need to see a shipping value for fba is probably um zero um but if if it's if it hasn't been downloaded here you'll see a, a dash right here and um you won't be able to set min and max price until we we get a, a value here it can be zero um and if there is no value here you can actually right here in the next column in shipping you can just enter you can enter your shipping here and 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 that'll get applied over here. Um, but after the shipping is downloaded from the reports, then this won't even matter. We'll we'll get the real shipping from the reports uh, within a few hours, anyways. Okay. And um, preferences just um, this lets you kind of uh, hide or show certain columns. Um, so you you guys can play around with that. Okay. Um, Chris, is there anything I missed from the managed listings page? Is that good? Um, I think that covers most of it. Just the, the big thing, you know, so if you guys are FBA sellers, that uh, general settings is, is killer helpful, you know. So as soon as you ship the items off, then Be Cool will pull it in. And if you set up the, you need to use the set shipping, you know, as zero. And then if you set your set min price and set max price to a, your price plus a certain percentage, you know, typically, then it can start repricing almost immediately, you know. And for example, I use maybe uh, min price is minus 25% and max price is plus 200% or 100%, you know, so it's like double the price, you know. So it just gives it some wiggle room so it can start repricing right away. It all depends on what your uh, margins were that you sourced at, but it, it, it helps a lot just before, uh, so you don't have to sit there and configure all of it right away right on yeah that's very um that's a real time saver cool okay yeah so i just i tried to show what chris said and then you hit save i'm going to hit cancel um okay that's that's on um, the managed listings page uh so on on to repricing rules um, so for your accounts, you should see four basic rules like this. Um, uh, so so I, I asked you earlier, do you want to compete against the buy box price or lowest price? So the, the top two rules are for competing against uh, buy box price and the bottom two are competing against lowest price. And we have like a, we have like a maximized profit version of, of both. And we have like a more aggressive scenario for both. Um, and so, yeah, but you can make your own rules actually. There's an add rule option and, and here you can, uh, you can even make a copy of the existing rules. Um, so once, once you have uh, listings applied to each rule, you, you'll see it here under listing count. You can see how many listings are applied to each rule and if you click it it'll, it'll take you back to the managed listings page and it'll pull up all the listings that are using this rule and um, here's the scheduler uh, but let's I guess let's go ahead and, and actually go into a rule okay so um, so this is actually what the rule looks like and um, and, and at the top, we have buy box settings. Buy box settings applies uh, when, you're, when you're in the buy box. When you're not in the buy box, you'll use repricing settings. And as I mentioned earlier, um, within each rule, you can choose to compete against lowest price or buy box price, um, whichever one works for you. Um, and, and here are the scenarios that I mentioned earlier. When, when the buy box winner is found uh, between min and max, no competition. Um, when the buy box winner is outside of your range, you can decide what you want to do. Um, oh, I didn't cover this earlier, is uh, the advanced settings. So, um, so repricing settings is how you want to compete against like all the competitors that you selected. But like, let's say, you want to compete against F your FBA and you want to compete against FBM sellers separately or in a different way, then you would turn it on. 
And you can have your own scenario for against FBN sellers, for example. Um, so a lot of a lot of users that that I've seen, um, they reprice a lot of FBA users. They reprice up five percent against FBN. So so like using this rule, like right now, um, it'll take the buy box price and maybe add one cent um, if it's like Amazon or FBA. But if it's FBM, uh, you'll use this advanced settings to reprice up 5%. So I think my rule is actually different. I think I altered it a little bit, um, but I think you, you get the idea. You can play around with, with the settings. And uh, below, below is the uh, custom settings that I mentioned earlier. Um, you, you can exclude, exclude sellers with backordered. Um, and, and reprice by subcondition. Okay, so that's that's basically that's basically the rule. Um, and and yeah, you can choose the lowest price option, and and you can see it's slightly different. Um, if you choose lowest price, we we also have an auto compete option, and. Um, what auto compete does is if like your competitors below your min price, you can't compete against them. And so um, auto compete will look for the next lowest price seller above your min price. Uh, so so how was that? Was that a little bit was that a little bit too fast because uh, or was that okay? what What do you think, Chris? I think that wasn't too bad. We'll see. I guess if anybody has any questions, yeah. I know rules can be really complicated. So uh, when you're first starting out, if you if you are first starting out, I would say just pick one of the rules that they already have, you know, and, and just kind of play with it and see what it does with your listings. Just the probably the maximized profit ones are pretty good. And you can start to kind of look at your listings and use like the price history, for instance, to see what each uh, SKU is doing and see what you want to change. And if you, you know, if you have further questions you can't figure out, there's always support or you can uh, find us in the user support group too and we can help you out there too. Yeah, if you have, if you have more questions, um, we'll come back to the rule during Q&A. And um, also within the My Slides, I have some of those scenarios. So if you need to see those again, we can, we can look at those again. Okay, so but basically the rule is just um, you decide how you want to compete for each scenario. You know whether the buy box whether the buy box price is um, above your min price or, or below your min price, etc. Or when you have no competition, like what do you, what do you want to do in each scenario? Okay, and. Um, so let's go back and uh, take a quick look at the scheduler. Uh, the scheduler is that you'll find that here, and you click on that. Um, so you, you decide if you either want to use the schedule that's for every day, or if you want to do just a specific time, you can only choose one or the other. And um, at here you um, decide when you want to pause repricing and when you pause if uh, how you want to change your price. So right now it won't change your price at all. Um, but if you, if you enter something like, uh, let's say like this. So um, each day when you pause repricing, like maybe it will go up by five, $5 from your current price. Um, or you can also like say, choose like your max price. And uh, down here, uh, the the fixed date schedule. So um, you you choose a time that you pause repricing and um, what you want to do when you pause and when you want to enable repricing. All right, and and when you're done with the schedule, you just hit save. Um, okay, I think that's that's all for the the rule. Let's go over to uh, dashboard. Uh, so we have uh, two dashboard. One is your main. I I don't have much 
data, unfortunately, in my dashboard. Like everything is zero because this is just our test account. But um, this dashboard is mainly just for helping you see uh, your sales and your orders. And um, actually, this is pretty popular. Uh, people like to see their best selling items by units ordered or by revenue. So you can come in here and you can check that out. Um, the repricing dashboard has more to do with repricing. Um, it'll tell you your buy box percentage. Uh, mine is 0%, but you will have something right here. Um, it also gives you some other lowest, uh, some uh, other good stats like um, what percentage of your listings um, are lowest price. Uh, let's see. And how many, like what percentage of your listings have competition? So you can you can see those things within the dashboard. Um, okay, so the reports, you'll find that up here. And yeah, so on the, uh, this is the reports. On the, there's four different types of reports. Um, daily sales, listing performance. Um, so there's one for sales and one for repricing. Uh, this, this one lets you see your stats across the, uh, across your entire account. As, as I kind of went over earlier, there's a lot of stats in here, but the most popular one is probably the buy box win percentage. And if you go to listing performance, you see all the data here but it's across, it's for each individual listing, okay? And um, and on the right side, you can add and hide columns. So right now, I'm only showing a very small percentage of all the, all the possible columns that are available. There's a lot of stuff here. Yep. And, and you can track for specific uh, times and you can enter a specific a ASIN that you're looking for. Um, okay, so, and, and daily, uh, so over here, this, this report is, is more just for tracking, tracking your sales. And, um, this one is, is more for tracking sales and orders for each listing. Okay, so that's, that's all for, uh, dashboard and reports. Um, I actually like to go back I, I forgot to talk about um i forgot to talk about price history um so unfortunately my my price history is blank but but this is where you can find your price changes and upload file so this is where you would use um your upload files so we have uh three different types of files the repricing central file um, it's more for uploading minimax price, uh, active, active listings file, um, is, is, is more for cost, right? Chris, you use this one, the active listings file. Uh, I think active listings was to kind of speed up some, uh, shipping fees potentially, but I don't use that one very much at all. Okay. I think most people, I think we, we made the active listing file because uh, a lot of users just want to upload cost, but they didn't want to um, change minimax price. So that's the difference between active listing file and repricing central file. And for those of you who come from inventory lab, um, we have the inventory lab closed batch report that also um, is also for uploading cost. Okay, and uh, I think. Oh, and, and we also have uh, we also have orders. Like you can um, you can look up your orders from here. I won't show you mine because I don't have any orders, so not really that much point in, in looking that up. So I think that's actually that's actually it. Like um, that. Those are the. Those are the major sections of, um, of, of the repricing. And what I would encourage you to do is, um, is to, after you set everything up, spend some time monitoring it 
and see how the results are versus your expectations and your goals and go back in and optimize your rules um, because every every seller has different competitors, different goals, different situations. So go back in, optimize your rules and your um, and your min and max price. And um, it's a cycle. And then you just uh, you you get more products and you reprice more listings. Okay, so I think that's that's it. Um, I'm going to come back to the. Uh, I'm going to stop the screen share. Okay. Ooh. My computer is freezing a little bit. I can't seem. I'm like. I'm. A, we're in like this infinity loop, right? Where. Uh, this is. Yeah. It seems like I've ex I, I've uh, left the screen for too long, and uh, now. Oops, it's freezing a little bit. Ah, okay. There. So let me get myself back on screen. So I guess if you guys have any questions, you can uh, type them in chat. Uh, you can also type them in the, there's a little questions answers area down at the bottom too. Yes, well, Michael's coming back. Uh, so uh, one way that you can approach your pricing, you know, you have your listings that are already there, so you might want to go through and decide what to do with those. So the first thing might be upload your costs uh, first. So you could do that through the inventory lab closed batch. You know, that's per batch. So you might have to do multiple batches. Or we can, uh, you know, there's other ways to do it using the Be Cool upload file. So that would get you started with your costs. So you don't have to enter them all by hand each one um, and then uh, for new items you know then you, you just do the closed batch is pretty simple if you want to do that every time you ship off a new batch you could uh, upload the closed batch to import your costs and then from there then you can set up your min and max prices and rules however you want to do that and you don't have to have the same uh, rules for each so uh, you can individualize each SKU, it depends on what you want to do. Can anyone hear me still? Okay, cool. Uh, right. Okay. Let me refresh once. Okay, can you guys um, 
Can you guys hear me now? This is okay. Am I? All right, we're back. And let me try to get Chris back on here as well. Okay. All right, cool. Okay. Woo, that was that same. Yeah, some panic. Um, so we had a question. There's a bulk pausing, a, uh, a group or bulk pausing probably. So that would be the bulk actions that you showed basically there. So I don't know if you want to attempt sharing your screen or if you want to just explain it or. I will. Um, it's, it's, it's worth it. It's, I'll try. Let's share it again. Maybe not like full screen. Um, yeah. How's that? Okay. So, um, so the bulk pause a group. So, so, um, you, do you mean like go into, go into the group, go into the group and, um, select the listings and, uh, let's, oh, well, there's a problem here is that some are enabled and some are paused. Uh, but, 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 um, but you see, I just selected the two that are enabled and, and here this, this is how you pause. Can, can everyone see that? Can you see that Chris? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so it's a little small, but it's seeable. And, uh, the other thing is, you know, so if, if you have mixed ones, you can sort them by just enabled listings or groups, like you said, like someone asked, Jing asked, you know, so you can totally sort however you want and then select the ones and then bulk change. Yeah, so this is within a group, but like, um, so let's let's go back out of the group. Okay, so uh, active listings. Okay, I only have seven, but okay, so these are, oh, sorry, should be, I, I need repricing enable listings, not active listings. Okay, so I have 12. Repricing enable listing, select that, and then uh, pause repricing on those. That's that's how you would do it. Okay, uh, someone's wondering how would you could you could we show how to import costs from Inventory Lab? Um, so maybe just show kind of the could you open up the template maybe, and that would maybe show them how you would proceed. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's, uh, and can you, can you hide like my video maybe so they can see better? A little okay. All right, sure. Yeah, let's, let's hide you. Um, there, that's not bad. It's okay. All right. Um, I'm a little, I'm, I'm a little bit rusty with this, but yeah, we, we go in the bulk, bulk upload file and, uh, download the template. That way they can just see it at least pretty much, you know, from inventory lab, all you have to do is go into inventory lab and go to your closed batches and you, there's a little uh, export icon, you know, and it's, and it's per batch. And this is what the, the file that he downloaded, it will look just like that with the headers, but it'll have your data in it, you know? And so all you do is download the file. It'll be a CSV, I believe, you know, export it and it'll be a CSV and you just need to open it and resave it as a, TSV, so a tabbed delimited or tab separated file, text file, and re-upload it there. So that it's pretty simple. Uh, it just takes a little bit of a little conversion. You know, you got to save the file as a different file. So you can, it's not too hard to do that. If you have specific questions, you know, they can totally help you out. Or you can post in the group here if you can't figure it out. But that's the basic premise. You just make sure you select the right uh, Upload file type though in Be Cool when you're uploading because there's three different ones. Mm -hmm. We we actually have um, a video on our support site that 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 actually shows you the entire process from uh, downloading it from Inventory Lab. Um, the and then awesome. like, copying and pasting it over here, so you guys can check out that video. 
And if you have any more specific questions, I'll, I'll try to um, kind of refresh myself, and then and, uh, and uh, we can we can email you, and walk you through it. Okay. Um, oh, oh, there's a few more. Um, there actually have a few more slides. So if I can go back, um, go back to my slides uh, after the demo. Okay, um, can you guys see that, the user resources right here? Yeah, could you make your, hide your uh, yeah, like that, video right? quick, maybe we'll make it see it. Yeah, okay, so um, I wanted to tell you about the resources that, that are available to you. So we have a support site, and um, that's a typo, it's not support at becool.com, that's actually our email. It should be support.becool.com. So sorry about that. Don't don't type in at. Uh, we have a support site, um, and and it's got lots of articles and um, uh, and 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 explanations for things for specific things. Uh, Chris was just telling me make sure to <laughs> tell everyone about the support site, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's on the top right. It kind of looks like a little uh, notebook. I think it. Or something like that so it, some people might not know it's there but that's where it is it's really helpful I'll show you once we're done with the slides I'll show you where like you can actually find the support site um, and we also have a YouTube channel um, where we post videos like this this will go up on YouTube so if you want to catch this again uh, you can and we we, ha we have um, as I mentioned we have other videos on there, like uh, how to use the inventory lab, close batch report. You can, there's a video for that. Um, we have a, a blog um, where, where we uh, try to um, uh, put out articles about um, helpful articles, about things that are going on in the news and, and things that, that we find out. Uh, we have our Facebook page. And um, we're, we're, we're posting um, interesting articles that we find, as well as uh, news and promotions that we have, they usually go up on Facebook. And our very uh, famous Facebook user group, um, I, I, I didn't put the URL because it's kind of, um, I don't know, it's just kind of long. I think you just type in, like, you search for Be Cool User Support, right, Chris? And, and you'll find it. Yeah, yeah, you should be able to find it that way. Yeah, and you just see Homer Simpson, and you know that yeah, you're in the right place. Um, we we also have um, we also have an affiliate program. Uh, so if if you're thinking about recommending uh, Be Cool to even like one or two friends, um, we we want to pay you for it. You know, there's no reason to do it for free. So please sign up for an affiliate program and so that we can uh, track the, the payment to you. Um, if you have any more questions about that, like um, you, can, you can email us. Um, okay, and um, for other support related stuff, uh, you can email support at becool.com. And um, if you have any questions by, by um, if, you, if you'd like a phone call, um, or you'd like to chat for us, I actually recommend if you can email us first and, and we set up an appointment. Um, that way we can, we can uh, uh, be guaranteed to um, get in touch with you. Uh, so let me, let me exit out of this and, and go ahead and show you where the support page is. Support.becool.com. Support And, and also, you can, you can find that under uh, resources. You can, um, on our main website, you can find our blog, uh, news, support, and affiliates from here. Okay, so uh, back, to, back to this really quick. Uh, so promos, okay, so let me tell you guys about um, the promos that we have going on right now. Um, 
So we have an additional 15% off the annual subscription. Um, and there's the coupon code right there. And um, the promo is only running for the next two weeks. So if you want to take advantage of this, you have to act quickly. Um, so what what is the additional 15% off? What is it actually? So if you look down at the bottom, uh, let's say our monthly $25 plan, it normally costs $300 per year. If you purchase annually, you get 10% off the uh, monthly rate. So it comes out to $22.50 per month or $270 per year. So with the annual promo that we have going on, um, so you purchase for the year, but you get an additional 15% off. So it comes out to $19.13 per month or $229.50 per year. So um, if you're thinking about subscribing us, subscribing with us for long term for a year, go ahead and uh, sign up for the annual promo. Okay, and that's all. So now we'll open, the, uh, open things up for Q&A. Back to, back to here. Uh, Chris, let's, I'll, I'll go ahead and close this and let's get Chris back on the screen. Okay. All right. So, yeah, so I guess he has any questions and we will answer them. Otherwise, we can totally talk about whatever, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so that ran a little bit more than an hour, I guess, an hour and uh, 10 minutes, I guess. But we're pretty much pretty much covered every everything. So what do you guys uh, so what do you guys think? Any 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 questions? I'm sure you did a fantastic job, so they have no questions. <laughs> or it hasn't sunk in yet because there's like, they're like, whoa, there's so much stuff here. Not even sure what yeah. to add. And it is, you know, it is a lot of stuff to take in. So if you're getting started or you have issues, you know, uh, don't worry about it. You know, just get started slowly. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be way better than not using a repricer, I'll tell you that. So if you, you know, still struggle and after a little while, give yourself some time to learn it and uh, give them a call or something or an email. Yeah. Oh, well, um, yeah, thanks. Thanks to Armando and um, Human. Am I saying that right? Hopefully I'm saying that right. Human, thank you guys very much for, for watching. You know, we, we really enjoy uh, – Helping, helping, helping you guys. So I'll, I'll try to do this. I'll try to do this uh, regularly, um, at least. Uh, I try to do it once per month. And and um, I mean, I guess you can come back next month if you'd like. Uh, but you probably will be a, a pro by then. Okay, I think, I think, I think we can wrap it up then. I don't, I don't really see any questions. I think everybody, everybody looks pretty, pretty okay, which is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, in that case, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who watched. I'll post this uh, back on YouTube, and um, I'll see you guys around in in the user group and and uh, just around so i'll talk you to uh we'll talk to you guys later thanks hey. all right bye bye all right let's stop